Yes, let's go. So, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Olivier Aubert. I'm happy to be there. Just a second. Can I give them yeah, okay. Four quarter, where I'm here. Okay, everything's fine. Good luck. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> so, I'm from France, from Nantes, and I'm a research engineer and uh, currently uh, freelance consulting uh, for uh, research projects. And I'm going to talk to you today about uh, the video software I developed, which is called Advin, which is a video annotation software, and how it's been used recently, because it's a, a software which has some history already, but it still has some uses and actualities. So I will present two use cases, two usage of the, of the application, so recent. So since it, it's a lightning talk, I'll be, I will be quick on the project itself, and then uh, talk about the two examples, which are the remind, me remind method application, which is a, a museology uh, investigation method, and the ADA project, which is a media studies project uh, with the Berlin. So Advin, what, it's a project which started in 2002. So that's rather old with Yannick Prier and Pierre-Antoine Champagne, University of Lyon. And we wanted to provide uh, tooling for accompanying active reading of audiovisual documents. And so active reading is uh, the, the possibility for a user to immerse himself in a document, to take notes and to structure, to, to, to have a, a scholarship workflow based on his annotation on the document. To, so to accompany reflections on the, of the document. So the, the goal is to create, share uh, analysis of audiovisual documents as things that we call hyper videos, basically a mix of annotations and video. It's a free software, so the project itself gave birth to a, a concrete artifact, which is uh, an application, the Advin application, which is a free software, GPL, uh, cross-platform desktop application using Python, GTK, and GStreamer. It's been used in different contexts, but uh, uh, I will talk about two, just two, two today. Quickly, the interface is uh, yes, rather common. It's centered around a video, uh, can I show that? Yes. There's a video player here, which is always there. And then around the video player, you, can, you, you have multiple places, which we call, uh, uh, I don't know the name we, we use the, uh, yeah, okay, places for, for different views for interacting with the metadata. So you put metadata, for instance, here, I've got below the video a view, which is a timeline view which is rather common in audiovisual uh, annotation domain or audiovisual manipulation. Uh, on the right, you've got the same data, which is presented in a different way. It's uh, as a transcription with time codes presented as the, this kind of thumbnails on the, uh, on the video. And then on the right, you've got an output of the process. So this is the, the, the first two views are the kind of tools. There are multiple other views, but these, these two views are the kind of tools that you're using in your process, in your scholar pro process of uh, exploring the, the content and constructing your analysis. And this on the right is, can be seen as the output of the process. So Advin tries to, 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 to be a tool that you can use throughout the whole process from structuring, analyzing, analyzing to produ producing outputs here. And we'll see how it goes. So basically the important notion to take from this figure is the uh, black rectangle that uh, surrounds the annotation structure, uh, the annotations themselves, the annotation structure, which is user defined, and uh, the different views, templates, and queries that are all put in the single package, which is the unit, the documentary unit that you can exchange uh, independently from the video. So the video is uh, on the side. It's metadata about the video. It ta we tackled different scientific challenges in this. So knowledge engineering, document engineering, HGI, and also data visualization and the analysis of activity traces. So that's was for the scientific part. We were interested uh, as researchers. And then uh, I'll go to the, through two use cases in digital humanities. So they are recent. The first one dates from uh, four years ago and the other one is from 2017. So Remind Method is uh, a project uh, done by Daniel Schmidt, which now is now a professor at University of Valenciennes. And the goal was to study the museum visitors' experience during a visit. And through 
the methodology used video-based autoconfrontation. So the visitors were equipped during an exhibit with a camera uh, on glasses to capture a subjective view of the of their visit of their experience. And after the visit, they were uh, they were interviewed by a researcher based on the video of the visit. And then the video this interview was captured and this is the primary material so the capture of the interview that was used in Advin to be analyzed by the researchers they transcribed the interview using using Advin they identified so they had different categories in their methodology so they could identify the, the, the different categories and okay and they used uh, relations to express so courses of experience so that's basically a group of categories that form a, a unit a meaningful unit for the researchers for the methodology so the, the underlying structure in Advin provided this, the support for this kind of for expressing this kind of information and then they could generate visualization through templates so these visualizations they they used them for their analysis during their exploratory analysis and then they could also put them on the on a website afterwards as, as a kind of publishing so this is what it gives basically so you've got on the on the uh, on your left on your left you've got the advin application with the timeline the transcription and so on you see different lines here that correspond to the different categories of analysis so the, the identified categories in the discourse in the interview and then here you've got on the right what you can find one of the views that, that is produced by the tool directly through a template system that is available on museography.fr website. So this was the first example. Uh, so I've got to be quick, but if you have questions, I'm here today and tomorrow. So uh, the other example is the ADA project, which is uh, carried out with in a collaboration with C the Cinepoetics team in Freie University Berlin and the HP in, H HPI in Potsdam. So Cinepoetics is doing media studies, so they're the final users. HPI is about, uh, they have a, a, an expertise, a good expertise in video uh, analysis, so feature extraction and so on. And we brought our expert expertise in video annotation, manipulation, interaction, and so on. And so the goal of the project was to study uh, the staging patterns in the audiovisual representations of the financial crisis. So they wanted to know if there are patterns that always come again and again when the, this is presented in documentaries, in, movie, in uh, feature movies, or in uh, TV broadcasts. And uh, for this, they wanted to apply quantitative methods. So annotate systematically, annotate movies, and then uh, dig into this data, this metadata they produced, to, to see, first to see for, the, for themselves if there are things interesting to, to, to dig in, and then also to provide a ground truth, I think I said my next slide, yes, to, to build a ground truth for future automation of the, of the system. So we, we need, yeah, the, we, we wanted to, to build some feature extraction specific for the, for the task, and we needed uh, data for this. So Advin provided the, the bridge between these uh, issues. So the idea was to optimize the manual annotation uh, process. So in order to, to be able to, to put students uh, to work uh, so that the teams of students annotated movies and to provide a bridge between the user's uh, manipulation of the data and its semantic representation because in the end with the HPI team they wanted to to have semantic so we produced an ontology and it was stored in a triple store and so on so they wanted to have semantic data but the users at the other hand didn't want to deal with semantic data they wanted to deal there were keywords or whatever so the tool here is what bridges the gap between both sides and so the, the application is the same. Basically, we did some adaptations but and optimizations. And I don't have time for the process. So uh, yeah, I'll just say that Advin was used to produce an ontology. So you can find the ontology that was produced through Advin, through this kind of uh, annotation structure definition that was carried out in Advin, and then used to build the first ontology, bootstrap ontology, that was after used for uh, over multiple iterations to, uh, to refine the, the ontology. And since we now got uh, multiple data, so the, 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 the 
current news for the project is that we are still working together. The, the ADA project itself is not yet completely over and we're working on uh, data visualization. So we now have uh, tens of thousands of annotations on movies and so this raises questions of how to visualize them for the, for the, for the schoolers, for the media studies schoolers. So we're working on this. And, oh yeah, just one point. Uh, uh, this is free software which is developed for a long time and the EDA project was the opportunity for me, just the first point of the, the development for that project, to update code for adapting to new systems. So it was, it's an old application which was Python 2, GTK2 and so on. I had to do the, an update uh, to the new versions of these libraries and I didn't have the time or opportunities. And this project was the opportunity, so do not hesitate to, to fund projects that may not be fit for you just right now, but may fit the task, but need some developments, and yes, contribute to the free software ecosystem by funding such projects so that we can, we can advance the free software development. And so that's it. We, so through these two examples, I try to show you that uh, this is a flexible, extensible, usable tool for digital uh, humanities and uh, I'm available also for development or consulting for this. Thank you. One short question. Yes. It's the same, yeah, uh, the question is, yes, uh, whether it's comparable to NVivo. So NVivo is one of the proprietary tools to, that, is, that are used in uh, ethnography or uh, ethnographic uh, studies. Uh, this is comparable. It doesn't have the same features, obviously, because it's free software, but it's open. You can, uh, and basically fit the bill for many of the, of the needs. So, yes, definitely, this is comparable to NVivo. Thank you. Take one more question. No. No. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh,